Department of Common State of Valley Board of School Directors. I'd like to welcome everyone that's here. A few of you there are, and those that have joined us online. And will you please join me in pledging the flag? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Could we have attendance, please, Ms. Martin? We have seven school board members present with Mr. Benigno and Mr. Talley absent. <clears throat> Are there any additions, changes to the agenda? No. If not, I'll take a motion to approve tonight's agenda. So moved. Second. Is that a second somewhere? Yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> All in favor say aye. 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 Any nays or abstentions? We have an agenda. We have a, enough people here. Superintendent's comments. Okay, good evening. My comments will be brief. We don't have uh, any new staff to introduce this evening, so I just wanted to take a few moments to uh, uh, just share a couple updates in the district. Uh, it's been a couple exciting couple of weeks. Uh, a lot of a lot of fun events happening. Uh, in the fall, it's that time of year. A lot of a lot of senior nights for athletics uh, and different student organization uh, events. I uh, had the opportunity to attend National Honor Society induction last week. That was a great event. Um, uh, get to experience my first ever uh, CV bonfire this week, so I'm looking forward to that. I, I've heard a lot of stories and uh, uh, I, a lot of hype around it, so I'm looking forward to that and my first uh, homecoming weekend as well. So some an exciting time in the district for sure. Uh, also just wanted to remind everybody out there, I don't see any of our principals in attendance this evening, uh, but October is National Principals Month. So if you see any of our principals, uh, send your thanks for all they do uh, to them uh, in your appreciation. So I do have one individual I would like to introduce tonight. Uh, Randy Smith is with us. Uh, Randy has been helping out in human resources as our interim HR director. Uh, he'll be on, his uh, contract will be on for approval at our next board meeting, but, but uh, for retroactive approval. But he's been helping us for about two weeks now. Uh, he uh, has brought a wealth of experience to CV. Uh, I don't want to date him, but I think about 40 years of human resources experience or 30. <laughs> so 36 years, something like, something like that. So uh, previously served with the Hempfield School District uh, and also in the private sector in human resources for many years. And he's been a breath of fresh air. He's come in. He's really helped, helped us organize some of our, our systems and our procedures and working with some of our uh, business office and HR staff who are rather new in their positions, and really just providing a lot of support. He's been, been, been very nice to have him with us for a few weeks. So. I wanted to introduce Randy to everybody. So that concludes my report. Okay. Uh, at this point, anyone from the public would like to make a comment on an agenda item? If not, we'll go straight to Mr. Johnson. Good evening. Good evening. Well, I guess I'm pinch hitting with Christopher not being here, so that's that's fine. <laughs> Uh, three change orders on the agenda for this evening. Um, which one do we have first? Um, oh, this is the uh, flooring one. <coughs> um, yeah, there was, it, it also includes some um, additional costs beyond the flooring. There's uh, um, some floor infills, and then there's also uh, control matting at Basin 1 that um, NPDES uh, kind of threw that in to us after bids were out and all of that was done. So um, we can thank those folks for that. So um, it's needed um, to to include in the basin rework they're doing the one that's over here outside the middle school. So uh, which is mostly completed as of now um, as far as their conversion of that basin. So that's that's a good thing. Uh, the, the middle part of that, the 7,900, um, they had a detail in there uh, based off of the way the drawings were created um, for infilling where a wall was demolished. Once they opened that up and saw what the condition really was, they brought the structural engineer back and said, mm, that, that detail's not going to work. So they revised that. So that's the additional cost for that. 
Uh, the flooring one seems like a high number. When we started out, it was closer to twice that number. Um, so <clears throat> to, to give you the history on that, um, we had an alternate to replace all the flooring in the corridor in the building. Uh, we looked to try to save that existing, um, it's, it's a terrazzo style tile that's in there. So um, we, we saved the tile throughout the majority of the corridors, both first floor and, second, and lower floor, upper, upper floor, sorry. But there are some things that we discovered were, they were, they were chipped, they were damaged. There are some things, you know, they had to do some trenching across it. So we have some areas that need patched in. Um, where they pulled out lockers, uh, we need to infill some areas. So this is us going back and forth between um, the contractor and and really coming up with what that scope of work is, and it's really related to the, all the corridor areas. So it's it's flooring that was not included in the original bid, um, but <clears throat> is needed to to complete the project. So um, not an error or omission in in, the, in any case. So, unforeseen circumstances. Unforeseen in this case, yes. So, unfortunately, my x ray vision does not work so well. Uh, <laughs> Any questions? Um, this one is another, um, we just utilizing uh, this to get some allowances. Uh, so, just it's an update of where those allowances are and what we build against them. So this is really no cost to us. These monies were built into the project. And the third one is related to the middle school. This is um, just a credit for the unused allowances from Matchline Mechanical. This helps us uh, get them towards being closed down. So. Questions? If not, this will be on the consent agenda next week. Very good. Thank, Thank you much. You. Thanks, Ann. This is Hunsinger, the first of many presentations. Oh, yes. We're just kicking off the fun. <laughs> so, good evening. Okay, so um, business office, as always, was busy back over the summer with uh, closing out the 22 23 fiscal year. Anthony was working very closely with our auditors. And they will be here next month to present the audited financial statements to you. But I wanted to kind of give you a preview of how we ended up the fiscal year. So under revenues, um, and some of this I alluded to during the budget presentations in the spring when we were talking about the projections. But our real estate tax collection percentage was higher than usual. It was 99.1%. So we did uh, collect more real estate taxes and the more rep taxes you collect now, the lower the delinquent taxes are going to be later on. But I wanted to point out, too, that about two years ago, we had a large commercial property uh, that filed an assessment appeal. And I got a, uh, an email over the summer saying that the uh, appeal was settled actually in our favor. It doesn't always happen that way. But the $482,000 that um, we settled was for the 22-23 and the 21-22 year. Um, and then um, they adjusted the assessed value going forward. Realty transfer taxes were high. It's uh, just a reflection of the economy uh, right now, the housing market. Uh, with interest rates going up, I do anticipate that those numbers will be going down. But there are also some large commercial properties that were sold during the year, too, that generated the extra revenue. And when we were preparing the 22-23 budget, uh, interest income rates were like at 0.2%, and now we're at 5.2%. So that accounts for the large increase in the revenue there. Basic ed subsidy, we, were, uh, <clears throat> we received $350,000 more than budget. And rental subsidies, I want to take a second on this. Um, you know, with, uh, with our construction projects, we have all the plan cons that are submitted to you and are approved. And there had been a moratorium on funding new plan con projects. Um, that was several years ago. We still went ahead, completed all the plan con documents, submitted to PDE. And then this summer, I got an email notification from PDE saying, oh, we're funding your projects. So that's a good problem to have. We'll uh, be continuing to 
uh, collect rental subsidies uh, in the years going forward. But this represents like three years worth of payments here. Hmm. Um, when Is this statewide they're doing this? Uh, they said, I, I, I reached, first of all, I reached out to several colleagues because I'm like, first of all, is this a scam email? <laughs> I, I wasn't buying it right away. And I actually talked to a, a colleague at another district and the same thing happened with them. Uh, they just, apparently, we just got the submission in right, maybe they gave us some grace period, got it in right before the moratorium or they changed that date a little bit, but we'll take it. Okay. We'll certainly take it. Um, what I will put out there right now is that mm -hmm. I am proposing that since this is um, related to our construction project and it was an unexpected revenue, that we transfer this $849,000 over into our capital reserve fund. But I want to have more of a discussion in a minute or two about transfers and then our fund balance commitments and assignments. So under expenditures, yes, we had, as you well know, a very challenging year last year as far as staffing goes. We had multiple multiple positions that were open throughout the entire year that weren't filled. It was just people were doing double duty or just, you know, um, realigning responsibilities. Um, then also, our, as you can see, too, our STS costs were over budget, which makes sense if we have lower amounts of salaries. Uh, same with SOSL, um, we were under budget there, uh, be primarily due to some of the staffing shortages that we continue to experience. Transportation was over budget by about $283,000. Uh, we did have increased uh, miles that we were uh, running the buses, and we also did have to uh, add two more buses. You know, working with Dawn Dixon in transportation, and she's got a plan where we're really trying to um, pull back on some of the other non-public carriers and use our bright bill buses. So she's doing a very nice job with that. Tuition costs were um, at over budget also. Uh, we had a lot of uh, special education placements, moves, move-ins to the district, which then increased those costs. And as you know, too, fuel prices went up, so our bus fuel was about 200000 over budget. So I want to focus first on the middle column, the 22-23 actual numbers. That $849,000 of the plan con subsidies I have included in these expenditures, you know, the second, the $81,748,000. Uh, I kind of separated ESSER because that just, um, it fluctuates too much and we're almost at the, we're in the last year of our ESSER funding anyway. But if we do transfer $2 million additional monies over into the Capital Reserve Fund, uh, we'll end the year with about a $237,000 surplus uh, when we had budgeted a $1 million deficit. And the reason why I want to talk to you about the um, fund balance trans or the transfers over to the Capital Reserve Fund as well as the fund balance commitment and assignments is that, as you know, PDE requires that our unassigned fund balance is at below 8% of our budgeted expenditures. So by transferring the plan con subsidies and the additional $2 million and making some adjustments on the um, fund balance commitments, we can get our unassigned fund balance down below to about 7.85%. So if you were to uh, take out some of the prior resolutions and look at what our fund balance commitments and assignments were um, last year or the year before, a lot of these have stayed the same. The, uh, the state pension benefit, health savings account, future debt service obligations, but we removed and eliminated a fund balance commitment for COVID expenditures. It's just, it's gone by the wayside. And in addition, we had um, a fund balance commitment for savings from bond refinancing of about $460,000, which also I, I'm proposing that we eliminate that. Instead, replace it with special education costs, since those are continuing to go up, and especially since um, we have to continue to educate some of the students uh, beyond uh, the what used to be the current date of 21. And then uh, because of the benefits that we've had from the interest income, the realty transfer taxes, I'm proposing a commitment for uh, stabilization for inflationary factors. Interest incomes aren't always going to, isn't always going to stay up that high. Realty transfer taxes, I could anticipate going down as well. 
So I just wanted to stop here on this. Did you have any uh, questions, suggestions on the transfers to Capital Reserve, the uh, commitments, assignments, any other thoughts? So you said those two, the special education and the stabilization for inflationary, mm -hmm. those are the two new, Yes. those would be two new commitments. Yes. And we got rid of the COVID funds, and what was the other one? Uh, a savings from bond refinancing okay. a few years ago. Any other thoughts? Are you okay with this? I'm okay with this. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Sounds like a good idea. Yeah. 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 That's great. Well, yeah. You know, I, I had some concerns about leaving money, but we also will be looking at uh, state money that we weren't sure of. So yes. we still have that wiggle room to put money in other uh, funds. Absolutely. Yes. So just as an FYI going forward, um, we'll have um, the fund balance uh, to the transfer of the, we'll, ha <laughs> we'll have the, um, on the consent agenda, approval of the transfers to the Capital Reserve Fund uh, for approval as well as the resolution for the fund balance commitment and assignment. We've got a couple other things for you, but just a sneak peek into the 24-25 year. I'm sure you probably already know that um, the Act 1 index is 5.3% for CV. I did do a very uh, quick calculation of the uh, exceptions, uh, typically the PISERS exception and special ed cost exception. We don't qualify for either of them, but I didn't foresee that we'd be applying for them, not with an index this high. And we don't anticipate a millage rate increase, obviously, this high either. So. Anything? That's it. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Kozer. Good evening. Okay, quick item for you. So you're looking at an agreement with Orego Education. This is the company that we purchased the Stepping Stones Elementary Math resor Resource from. Um, we have an opportunity this year, so as Adele was just saying, we're on our last ESSER, the ESSER 3, that ends a year from now. And so this is our year to really focus on sustainability, to focus on building capacity within the district. And so we have an opportunity to work directly with one of the authors of the Stepping Stones program to provide an intensive professional learning experience for our four elementary math specialists. So the goal of this is, you can see we've got virtual sessions, we've got on-site sessions. She's gonna be providing direct coaching and technical assistance to our math specialists so that at the end of this year, we fully have transferred that professional learning from the company and their consultants into our CV staff members who are the leaders in this area. Um, you know, this is the great piece with ESSER. We get to make those once-in-a-lifetime textbook purchases that are funded, but now we also get to provide the top quality professional learning that goes with those resources in order to make sure our teachers have what they need. So this would be services for the year um, with those four coaches, and then uh, I oversee that math piece, so we would be meeting as an elementary team to work on our sustainability plans um, starting in the second semester. So I just have a quick question. Um, so they're working with the math specialist. So mm -hmm. how's that like going to fall down to the rest of the teachers? Basically? Absolutely. So our math specialists are in charge of providing the professional learning for all of the elementary teachers. And they do that in a couple of ways. Once a month, we actually have a math grade level team meeting day where they're responsible for facilitating those mini PD times throughout the school day. Uh, for example, Friday was a professional learning day. Our math specialists actually ran sessions at their buildings for support of um, stepping stones and the assessment pieces within that program. And then they provide early dismissal support. They provide coaching support to new teachers um, and or teachers who request that additional support in their classroom. So through our various, various PD structures, they would be turning that around. That's helpful just, I think, to know for what's happening with all the kids yeah. and how it impacts them. So it's good. Thank you. Right. Yeah. No, I mean, it's the same thing when ELA came. So you have all these math specialists and they work together. And then what? They coordinate with the middle and high school to make sure that we have a K-12 <coughs> continuum. 
That's, that is what the Modern Learning Project has done for us. Again, last week we had K-12 to math teachers in a room for two days uh, lining up our curriculum. The resource of Stepping Stones, this is going to really get into the weeds of the program, the resource that we're using, working through assessments, working through best practices that we see in classrooms. So those on-site days are really going to be coaching in classroom days where the consultant is walking the math classrooms with the, with the math specialists and the principal identifying, you know, where are those bright spots that we're seeing teachers really grab a hold of and then where are the areas that teachers need additional support. We do coordinate through those department chair roles across the K-12 continuum with what we're working on in elementary so that it um, moves up into the middle school as well. Okay, thank you. During COVID, was it sixth and seventh grade that was having trouble with math? <laughs> All across the board, our math scores have been relatively stagnant. We haven't seen a lot of shifts either way. I will say in um, our latest PSSA data, we did already see an upswing in elementary PSSA scores just by having a common resource in everyone's hands. Just that little step of consistency across the schools, we already did see that bump. But we definitely see a drop, yes, when we go from elementary to middle. Uh, so I think that vertical articulation is going to be critical. So then after this, um, with the professional development and obviously with them being on site and kind of work, is this like, because I'm trying to remember the kind of phased approach with mm -hmm. stepping stones, because you implement it, everybody gets a chance to embrace it and start it. There's some of that initial PD that goes into that. They're developing curriculum in, the, in class. And then we do this stuff. Is this kind of what's the next step after this for Orgo, or is that at that point we should be running? At that point, we will check in with them as needed. But the goal is this is almost a train the trainer type model. The goal is with this level of intensive professional learning. I mean, this is this is a big package compared to what districts can normally afford. And that's again the beauty of using our ESSER funds to address some of these these systems. Um, really, we should have four team members who are considered train the trainers and could turn around those stepping stones um, pieces for new teachers or whoever comes into the district. Awesome. Dr. Cooter, I assume this is an all in cost, so it's mm -hmm. silent on their travel and expenses. That's yep, all correct. In. All in. Yep. So we are asking for action. For What's up? We have a request for approval. Of yes, season. please. We'd like to get this moving. I think next week if we're starting no to schedule questions. some of these sessions. That'd be great. If there are no more questions, we'll entertain a motion to approve uh, the Arrigo Stepping Stones program. Motion Seven. to approve. Mm -hmm. Second. <laughs> <laughs> we have roll call, please. Mr. Denzel. Aye. Mr. Dillman? Aye. Mrs. Kapka? Aye. Mr. Talley? Aye. Mr. Hurst? Aye. Dr. Martin? Aye. Ms. Trowbridge? Aye. Mrs. Groff? Aye. Okay. There you go. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Oh, my goodness. The uh, agenda for next week is posted. If you have any questions, let one of us know. <clears throat> is there anyone from the public that has comments they'd like to make on any issue? Uh, board matters. Any comments from board members? I would remind you that I have appointed a, a nominating team uh, to report to us next month. Um, if anyone wants the team to consider uh, them for a position, please let them know. If anyone has any questions about how we handle all of the uh, reorganization and elections, ask Mrs. Martin. <laughs> right? Thanks. You're welcome. Anytime. Glad to do it. If there's no other issues, I will gladly, we get better every week here, uh, entertain a motion for adjournment to executive session for both legal and personnel reasons. So moved. Second. All in favor? 